All right. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, basically, we heard a lot of theories already, right? So basically, I'm the application guy and the implementation guy. So I have a solid uh, 12 years experience in software development. So these boss people come to me. So Cyrus, we have this process, right? I want to implement this. How we, how do we make sure that this process are really implemented and followed by my employees? So there are certain challenges, right? First is that we do have uh, global applications. We have internal applications. But what we want really is a platform wherein this data are sitting, uh, sitting inside that platform. So you have change management, incident management, and other things. So other, other, any other applications sitting in one application where you access data. Uh, the data is one single uh, truth, but they're being segregated depending on the type of users or the type of application that are being used. So within the company, uh, this is the experiences that we have. This is our actual implementation that we have that solves the problems that we are having in the past. So uh, Adrian, as Adrian has mentioned a while ago, is a journey. I close the journey and having the right process is a journey. I mean, we had two years of experience and having to experiment, like, okay, what's the right process? We had a lot of learning curve, we had a lot of experience. It was, a, uh, it was hard, definitely, at, at first, but it was really rewarding. Now we are beginning to, to uh, reap the benefits of those efforts that we had early on for two years. So this is the application that at, we actually implemented. Uh, we have a platform that, uh, uh, that creates this application within BAG. The users that we have, they log into the system and access the application that they need. They have access to certain application that they need depending on the teams that they have, depending on the roles that they have. So, we have case management, we have customer profile management, we have knowledge base, uh, we have workflows and work uh, alerts. So basically, that's how we try to implement, for example, this process needs to be completed before we move on to the next process. So basically, I, you come to me, okay, Cyrus, how do we validate that we have performed a certain process before we move to the next phase? It's very important, especially for change requests. Right? CRs. How do you implement your CRs? Uh, uh, are we following the right process based on the best practices uh, I told recommended? So, this, this is a challenge and so let's move on to the next one. So what do we have actually uh, that confirms this? So we have service level management. So how do we make sure that, hey, for example, for five days, I want to make sure that this, this uh, incident is solved. But I don't want to wait five days to notify that my, my SLA is already breached. So give me like three days. Three days, send me a notification. Hey, I need, hey, you haven't worked on this project, uh, this incident yet? Or you haven't worked on this service request yet? So you get reminded, all people are reminded, hey, it's time for me to work on this. Oh, I need help from my teammates that I think I uh, uh, have a lot of bug bugs. I need uh, help from other departments who are more expert in these type of problems, these sort of problems. So we have service reporting, which is very important because uh, we do a set of reports to our clients that, hey, these are the number of cases we have this month. These are the number of uh, uh, the type of categories that we have. And, you know, so these are by contract. We need to pull the data quickly in real time as well. Dashboard. So we have dashboard uh, because we are having, we do have a call center supporting, uh, of course, the Mr. Finance, and we want to make sure that our sales you are informed what is the, what is the more crit most critical case today, what are the most important cases that needs, uh, needs attention. So we, we, we try to have this dashboard to give us informed information so that we can, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about satisfied clients. So uh, customer service is very important in our company. And then analytics. So we have uh, metrics. KPIs, of course, ITL is very, uh, very uh, strict in this one. We have exception reports. For example, uh, how long did actually uh, our, our session resolve this problem? So over time, we have data that tells us, okay, I think this type of, uh, of case is taking too, too long to solve. So we're trying to analyze, okay, this is the problem point, this is the pain point, it's concentrating this. All right? Over time, we're, 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 uh, we're getting good at it that 
I think management realized that, th that this platform that we have actually works, and then we introduced another one, another application, another application that compromised a lot. And right now we're still working that. So there's some. These are some things that uh, some of the other possibility that we can have. For example, employee capacity, uh, competency, right? So for example, the number of trainings that you have for your employees. So in the past, you have several applications. Like for example, you have a different application for your change management, change management, incident management. The overall cost of this application is actually quite expensive. Rather than to have a single platform, you just develop application within that platform, and you have certain developers to do that, and that will actually save your overall cost, rather than buying other applications to serve you this, and buy other applications to do that. And I think that's a little bit expensive. For we as a company, we try to save, of course, cost. And we find that the platform that we are using right now solves the problem. So other things you can do is asset scheduling, uh, business process applications. So this is one of the key things that we always uh, try to implement. So process, it's very important that you do this before you do that, rolling off, rolling out. For example, uh, how do you make sure that when these people roll in, in a project, is the, were he able to complete this task, this task, this task? What's the proof? All right, what's the proof? Uh, before he can move on to the next step, very important for rolling out, especially. You know, were you able to return your IDs? Things like that, very important. Sometimes these things are missed, and actually there's, there's still underlying cost there. Some some companies just you know, neglect, and, and uh, you can actually save money. Uh, a lot of time and effort when you have these applications. Okay, before 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 moving to this, uh, I want to share about my experiences in, in oil and gas. So I was working five years for an oil and gas company in Japan called uh, Choda Corporation. Uh, it's an oil and gas and engineering company. Uh, I was actually in Qatar uh, when we first uh, we, when we built the largest LNG plant in the world, in Qatar Gas and Ras Gas. So my 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 functions are serving my. I have two uh, two types of stakeholders. Uh, first is the uh, senior uh, supervisors, the engineers, and stakeholders, the management. So first, so we all know uh, this oil and gas. I, I assume uh, many of you know about this. About we have large pro procurement application, and then one of my functions is that we have this large uh, procurement application, right? But it's too big. It doesn't really aggregate some of the stuff that you need. For example. In the past, management asked me, Cyrus, can you extract uh, the dynage? Because I, I said, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, how we build our subcontractors and spare dynage, uh, how much they work in one pipe. So basically, because we're the main contractor, uh, we pay subcontractor by that. So we forecast how much do we need, how much resource do we need in the future? Or right now, how much are we spending? So that's that's how we we plan your your human resources and how much we pay our, our subcons. And other than that, I have another stakeholder. So I make another application for my supervisor. So supervisor will come to me, Cyrus. I want to know where is the location of this pipe. Uh, where is it, where is it coming? I need this one. So I want to be able to plan his 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 uh, engineers to to know what are the things that he can do. So it's in an environment, in a site environment like this. A lot of people come to me, so there are a lot of dependencies, right? So thinking back, uh, if we just have a single platform that compromises this one, uh, that has this capability, this capability of a single platform like this, they don't ha actually need people like me to, you know, come to me and then ask for this information because they can access it themselves. All right? There's a lot of, and, and one risk is that I was very, very young back then, so I was like homesick. I said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I want to go home because it's in Middle East. It's so, so hot. So the problem being is they get panicked because well, they're the, I'm the only guy who can give them that information at the time. And I was really like mature at the time. Said, I want to go home. I want to go home. I cannot do this anymore. We're working like six, uh, six days a week because uh, it's in Qatar and we only have like five days as vacation. And I'm not going to draw up. I'm going to go home. And see, there's a dependency there. If we eliminate the uh, dependency, having an application that they can access uh, without really once applications develop, no need for them to like come to me and ask those questions because 
is all sitting in one platform. So, of course, this is the most important thing. So, ROI. Why do we, we need to do this, right? Because uh, this should be return on investment. So, we choose uh, recurring in our side. This is the, the ROI in our side. So, because we because of the application that we made, we reduce the recurring incidents that we have. Very important. For example, in the past, there are like cases that they, they, they're having problems all the time. Because of the data that we have and the restriction that we have, we're able to analyze. I think that the, the problem, the source of the problem is this one. So, recurring incident went down. Root cause analysis incident and problem backlog. So, so these are the these are the other uh, benefits that we have, especially uh, SLAs. We, we're getting good at fixing, uh, answering, uh, resolving problems. We uh, we call this one uh, reducing the overall incident count. And some of the things that we we uh, we actually have uh, improved within the company. So that's all uh, in terms of how we apply ITO in our organization. So I think uh, Melvin has something else to. Sorry, oh. we're actually in lunch right. hours, so probably yeah. break for Okay, I'll do a ten minute quick run then. Okay. <laughs> ten minutes too long. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, at the end of this, uh, no more, uh, we want to sell you one product, or at least product we want to sell you. La. Oh, just kidding. Okay. What Cyrus is saying is that you're looking at the dashboard, you're looking at uh, your reports. The important thing here is to visualize your data. What does that mean? Um, so let's say you, you look at this, for example, uh, and I ask you to say, how many nines are there in your data? You know, you actually have to eyeball and look at things like that. But if you apply visual cues to it, you change the way your data is presented. There, there, if I color the nines, you can easily count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Ten nines. That's one example of it. So, um, basically, this is what I'm going to uh, say, what is visual analytic example, case N, five at the end. Okay, what is visual analytics? Visual analytics is the representation and presentation of data that exploits our visual perception abilities in order to amplify cognition. Basically what it means that you make the important point stand out. You make your, your story stand out. That's the whole point of visualizing your data. So, an example. We're faster when we can see data. If you have your data tabulated this way, uh, what kind of analysis or what kind of uh, conclusion that you come up with. Um, you have to look, what's your customer segment that you're looking at. Let's do the same thing where we did that now. Let's color the negative. So now you see that, okay, oh, okay. Uh, you notice your table segment and your scissors and rulers are getting negative. So it's not really doing well. But let's take it a step further. Take this data, we visualize it. You throw them into a bar graph. Now your data are easier to see, right? you know instantly at first glance what you want to see, what kind of conclusion you're going to, you need to make, and what are the things that needs your attention. So a case study is like in uh, 1854 where there's a Corella outbreak in London. Uh, this was done by John Snow. So what happened is that there was Corella outbreak that you know everyone was getting sick, vomiting, and the whole stench of uh, London was out. Wow. So what John Snow did was that he's a, a physician he took a plot and plotted on where all the Corella outbreaks and cases are reported and by size of it. And from that data, actually, he actually found out that, you know, it's actually related to a particular water pump. The Corella was spread through water but not airborne. So that's how, you know, they managed to contain it and stuff like that. So, five happy endings or five steps to get to your happy ending. First one is identify your audience. Ask yourself, who am I reporting to? Uh, what kind of information do they want to consume? Uh, is there a group or an audience? Is there where and where can I communicate with them? Second one is you said an objective, a story that you want to tell. Uh, what business decision does my audience need? What kind of you know decision do they make? What problems are they trying to solve? What do they already know, for example? And uh, what have they been told? And how important is their decision? Then, 
Am I recommending a decision or providing the facts? Step three is decide which data that will tell this story. Which data are you going to show them? Uh, what data does your company have available to investigate the story? Do I need to use uh, this data set? Uh, can I get new data, for example? And what are the analytics that you need to apply? What are the algorithms that you need to do? For fun is decide how you tell your story. See, so how you tell the story from the from a table itself into a bar chart. That itself tells you, you know, makes things easier for you to visualize. So decide how you're gonna tell your story. If you have, you know, like five rows of data that you have to show, a simple pie chart will do. You don't need to draw all that. What's the best way to bring your audience? You have to decide this. What visualization do you need? What software do I have available? And how often do I need to update the data? Sometimes you need real-time data. Uh, last but not least, improve next time. Get feedback. Did your audience uh, understand uh, what everything? Did they have insufficient information? Was the decision they made based on your data and visualization especially useful? And is there anything else to improve or add in the future? Thank you. Five minutes. Very good. <laughs> okay. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you for coming uh, from BAG Networks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.